Hi, I am Greg Keller. I am GemCloud's Chief Product Officer, and I welcome you today to a little whiteboard presentation we wanted to put together for you, our prospects and customers, explaining GemCloud and what it is with respect to its protocols. So let's use our trusty pen here and walk you through a little bit of the architecture of GemCloud so you can see some of the value that we've created for you in attaching resources through these various protocols. Let's begin here. At the epicenter of GemCloud is our core directory service. I want to make something clear. This is not an instantiation of or a hosted version of LDAP or Active Directory up in the cloud. GemCloud's directory is built in the spirit of a traditional directory like those uh, aforementioned directories. However, it's our own proprietary architecture. But as you'll see, the concepts still apply. Within the center of this directory service, there are effectively two objects that you need to be concerned about. One is the user object. This is all of the critical information you are storing about your employees or service account users. Their metadata, like their name, their various attributes, uh, and of course, uh, credentials. But remember, using GemCloud, the storage of our information is all done through very deep encrypted hashed and salted versions of that information. We never capture or, or rather store clear text password in any capacity within our infrastructure. So users is the first object. The second object type that you will be familiar with is a group object. And just as the name implies, groups are exactly that. They are collections of things typically collections of users, like a sales group. Inside that group are your members, your user members, and you simply can add users in or take them away. And you'll see why in a second, not just to add or remove them from a container, but those containers are critical as membership-based objects to various resources. But how do the memberships get to those resources? This is where the protocols come in. Jump Cloud is uh, special in the fact that we really have focused on the development of protocols themselves. And let's walk through them so you can see more or less the totality of the various resources that can connect to our directory. And really what that translates to is the totality of the resources any given employee can get connected to. Let's start at the top. We're going to first talk about the, uh, a protocol, which is less a protocol, and frankly, our own proprietary system agent. The agent is deployed to uh, of systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux, but these can be physical systems like your employee's laptop, right? Or virtual systems like, let's say, this is the cloud, and these are my Linux servers, clusters of Linux servers, potentially thousands of them up in the cloud. JumpCloud utilizes our agent architecture, lightweight, highly encrypted, in order to perform a binding or tethering mechanism to the directory. When you add users to groups or individually, those user accounts then get propagated out to the various systems. The system agent does effectively four things. One, user account management, literally creating or binding to pre-existing local accounts on those machines, just as if you were on the native operating system itself. The second thing it does is event logging, meaning we know and you can collect the data from who's logging into what machines when um, from any IP address. Very important for compliance reasons. The third thing is command execution. What this means is an administrator can build scripts, PowerShell, Bash, Python, it doesn't matter to us. You can create those scripts and deploy them against those endpoints. And the fourth, as it relates to Mac and Linux, we have the ability to set multi-factor authentication on those endpoints. So in addition to the Jump Cloud password that your users will require, they can pull out their mobile phones using Duo for Mobile or Google Authenticator and add a TOTP token key in addition to the password to get into the machines. 
So system, we're going to we're going to write the word agent in here. That's the first non-protocol. It's our own proprietary method, but the first sort of binding thing, a resource uh, out that connects to users. The second thing uh, is SAML. We utilize the SAML2 protocol 2.0 in order to connect to a wide variety of SaaS applications, web-based applications. These could be anything from uh, BlueJeans, which is a video conferencing service, to uh, Amazon, AWS, IAM, to Slack, etc. So in this case, we offer uh, 100 and 150 or so um, uh, web-based application connectors that utilize the SAML protocol. And again, the same concept applies. Your group of users can be connected to a specific SAML connector, add a user to the group, it gets access to the SAML connector and thus the, the web app. So that's SAML. The next is RADIUS. So our product offers something we refer to as RADIUS as a service. This literally is RADIUS in the cloud. And what we've done is taken off your plate the hard work of downloading something like Free Radius, installing it, managing it, making it redundant, keeping it resilient. We've removed all that. That's what we do. That's what you pay us to do up in the cloud. You simply get to benefit from the protocol. So what are we buying to? It doesn't matter as long as it speaks the Open Radius protocol. So as an example, you may have uh, you know wireless endpoints. Wi-Fi, uh, Aruba, Meraki, wireless, WAPS, um, that you need unique authentication on. Uh, for example, you want to stop the process of sharing SSIDs and passwords, and you want your single employee to use their credentials to get access to the Wi-Fi. This is what you do by adding the user credentials to a group and tell the group which Wi-Fi endpoints that they can get access to. So you can start to model privileges at that level. The second related to Radius very often is our VPN clients. Open VPN, name it, there's a ton of different VPN clients. Very similar. At the end of the day, these are providing network access. So we have system level access, we have applica web application level access, and now we have network access bound. But let's go further. What's the next protocol? Just like Radius as a service, we offer LDAP as a service. Same exact concept here. We offer you the LDAP protocol. We strip away all the management overhead of managing LDAP servers and open LDAP servers. This way, you bind resources and just worry about the configuration of LDAP. You are exploiting the protocol. You're not mired in the mess of configuring and managing an LDAP server. LDAP, as a 30-year-old protocol, is endless in terms of the uh, on-premise applications and even cloud-based applications that utilize this protocol to bind to a traditional directory. I mean, granted, Jump Cloud up in the cloud is a not a traditional directory. It's modern, it's cloud-based, etc. But we know that utilizing LDAP is still a highly leveraged practice. You have actual things that need to connect to, that users need to connect to. What are those things? What about a file server, like a NAS, Synology, QNAP, et cetera, utilizing uh, elements of Samba, part of the LDAP authentication protocol? That's covered. The second area may be uh, on-premise applications. And by on-premise, you could put them in a virtualized server, but meaning a, a Windows server, et cetera. But an application that you have downloaded a stack of, it could be Jira, Confluence, any of the Atlassian tools that you have downloaded the server for, all of these traditional apps use an LDAP back. So we can say things like Jira. Again, thousands of applications. Jenkins for the folks in the DevOps crowd use us uh, in order to back to an LDAP directory. And again, all of this, LDAP and RADIUS included, 
can leverage our group infrastructure to manage those group-based permissions which LDAP respects in our LDAP endpoint. Finally, we have a special protocol. Actually, it's not very special, it's OAuth. But we utilize OAuth in a very specific manner for a specific use case. Let me explain. So in, I'll write OAuth here, but it's really a combination of OAuth and our API and APIs. What is this used for? Two very special tenants. We'll call them directories. One is Google or G Suite. So Google G Suite, those are identities. And of course, Office 365, which really under the covers is Azure AD. In this particular instance, we utilize the OAuth protocol to bind to those tenants, your tenants. And the reason why we do that is to obviate the need of things like GADS, if you're familiar with that, Google Apps Directory Sync, which is, again, a self-hosted server that connects an instance of Google to a backing directory, like an LDAP or an Active Directory. None of that is needed anymore. So we use modern, standard, secure protocols to give you access, and we take control over the identities and the provisioning and the password management, etc. The same thing applies for Office 365. So a lot of folks ask us, how do we manage identities in, in Office 365 without Active Directory and all of the sort of network tunneling and DuraSync and all the things that are required to make that handshake between the Microsoft Cloud product, which is O365 and underneath of which is Azure, and a traditional on-premise directory. With this model, this is 100% cloud no additional needs for server things in order to bind and connect and keep the synchronization flowing between these, uh, between these identities. So again, when we step back and you sort of see the totality of what GemCloud is doing, we focused here on these protocols, the tough stuff, so that we can provide as much breadth in totality as possible for a user when they are onboarded to get connected to stuff. This is the goal of an IT admin. They want a single set of credentials instantly mapped to many things that the employee needs and the inverse when that employee is offboarded. How do we sort of extract ourselves and their, their access to those things? That is the power of GemCloud. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more upcoming videos in our whiteboard series. Thanks again.